It belongs then to Kuvadorian Beatrice. There's like no other possibility. What's his reaction? I feel bad for Kizo now. They actually told him. Is she able to figure it out from this information? So yeah, I was right. But I started like watering for a while here. Wait, did he get like heart attack or something? Okay, that makes more sense. That's why they're different. Hello and welcome, Pocket Watch here, and it seems it's about time for yet another episode of Umineko Chiru. So yeah, this time we're going to dive into the episode where we're going to actually see Beatrice slash Shannon uh, meeting with Kinzo, and we'll see what Kinzo's reaction will be for his beloved Beatrice being resurrected. So yeah, I'm getting excited. Also, based on your comments under the previous episodes, thanks for your comments. Um, I think I might be a bit too harsh on Shannon, actually. I can see your point. Um, I mean, I thought, like, maybe she have, like, some kind of, like, personality problems, like, disorder, something like that. But if you think about this, like, there's a lot of characters that do the same stuff, right? There's, like, Natsuhi from uh, episode 5. Well, episode 5 is, like, a little reliable, but it's still okay. I mean, we have some red truths. Red truths are okay, I think. So, she imagined uh, Beatrice, basically. Maria is imagining Sakutaro. Um, what else? Uh, people, like, changing their... Uh, themselves, basically, act as someone else. Just like Jessica in school is someone else. Just as she, like, explained to Canon back in the episode 6, I believe. Uh, so yeah, so it's not necessarily being the problem of her being like ill. Uh, it might be just like the idea of how characters in Mine could deal with some stuff, you know? Like uh, Maria being uh, searched for love and she's been abused. So she created Sakutaro who loved her and uh, she could play with him and stuff, you know? So that was her like... Um, you know, dealing with uh, with daily stuff. And I think it might be also the case for Yasu in this case. Like, the first Beatrice, Yasu So, uh, aka Gap. Uh, she was always clumsy and stuff. So, she created Gap, basically, in order to, like... Uh, is the pain of her uh, of like blaming herself all the time you know like she's been told that you are clumsy and stuff and uh, she didn't want that so she created someone to <clears throat> to talk about this and basically push the blame on i think and yeah and so on like shannon canon canon is probably created because she wanted to <clears throat> is the pain from like Butler not coming back? She wanted to forget. She wanted to have someone who will constantly remind her uh, that um, you know she should just focus on what she's doing. She should not wait and uh, and stuff and just grieve all the time. <clears throat> so so Cardinal is basically also the character, the personality, the imaginary friend that helps Shannon deal with basically Butler disappearance. So, yeah, maybe maybe the mental disorder or something was, like, a bit too harsh. I mean, it could be, like, some, like, genetic stuff and half of the family is just delusional, like, crazy maniacs, but who knows. <laughs> anyway, let's just go to the episode. I talked, uh, like, I think, okay, okay, maybe too much. Okay, let's just go to the episode. Okay, let's go. An announcement. Uh, hi. And there she is in the dress that we all know and love. Okay. Also, by the way, now I think about this. Isn't this dress... Is this dress original? It's original, right? It belongs then to Kuvadorian Beatrice. Yeah, so she's basically wearing her mother like dress, if you think about this at this point. Okay. After Genji knocked, the sound of the study door unlocking could be heard. After a single glance, telling uh, me to wait, Genji entered alone. 
Yeah. Yeah, Kumasawa also know who Yasu truly is. Also, yeah. I'm still not sure, like, what's the real name for Yasu. I mean, it could be... I think it's one of the two, because Yasu is obviously not the name, right? Because this is a surname that was given in the orphanage. We had this established before. Basically, Yasu's real name is either Lion or Sayo. There's, like, no other possibility. Because canon being created by Yasu, Yasuda is most likely, like, name from Yasu's surname, the thing that she don't like. And Shannon said that her real name was Sayo, and also we have uh, Leon from the from current game, which is like the most like real name. I mean, like the original name that uh, Yasu would have if she survived. I mean, if she survived and was not like I mean, not like abandoned, not survived. But yeah, I thought this dress, which didn't really suit me would lead to a lot of jokes, but she didn't laugh at me at all. On the contrary, when she saw me, her expression had turned stern, as though a long-awaited day had finally come. Oh, you don't know. You to have no idea. My heart raced. It wasn't supposed to matter who solved the epitaph. There shouldn't be anything strange about me solving it. Yep, and yet it's a big deal for all of them. Everyone else maintained solemn expressions, and that, along with everything else, made us feel like some sort of grand ceremony. The suffocating silence continued. Eventually the door opened, and Kenji picked out. Oh, what's that? What's his reaction? So Kinzo actually met with Beato before he died. I didn't actually, I didn't thought about this actually last time, I think. Like, but... He's actually met with his, his like, Beatrice, and if you think about this, also reunited with his child. Which is kinda creepy, also, because we know how Diasu been born at this point. Wait, is that... Oh my god, she's wearing her mother dress, I just realized. They're not going to tell her who is her mother, right? They're not going to add fire. He was saying those words to me, but not to the person I had been built and I had been until a short while ago. Yeah, they keep calling her Beatrice. Kamasawa also urged me forward with a respectful bow. Kinzo was probably waiting for me inside. What expression should I wear as I go in? How should I greet him? I don't have a clue. As the two of them uh, uh, motioned me forward, it was all I could do to avoid tripping over my dress as I walked. Also, I think I mentioned this before, but technically Beatrice slash Yasu and stuff is like pretty much like direct descendant from Kinzo and 100% like she can be like the next head it's like applying to her as well like to everyone else but still she's like one of the youngest because well we have like Kraus and stuff that's like the oldest but yeah she's like kind of like Okay, I'm, I, okay, I don't want to talk about like family tree now. I need to like open the tree and stuff. I, I got a bit confused, but yeah, basically she can like have like, have like legally, you know, being the head. Basically, it's not like she's outsider, and she's like blood related to Kim. Okay, let's see. Kinzo was before the portrait of Beatrice. Crouched on the ground, as though kneeling. At Nanjo words, he tro slowly turned, still crouching. Holy shit. Yep. 
That's the portrait that came to you. Are you going to apologize? Are you going to... What are you going to say? Because this is important. His eyes were already red with crying. When he saw me, he groaned with wonder. Beatrice. Beatrice. He had... Uh, had he ever forgotten how to stand up? He crawled over to where I was. And he called out to me with the name of the woman he had loved long ago. I was too stunned to move. Then Kinzo grabbed uh, the hem of my dress, gripping it tightly, then curled up and sobbed. Aww. I feel bad for Kinzo now. But I also... It's, it's the same situation as last episode. I'm conflicted. I don't know if I feel bad for Kinzo or not. Oh my god. Okay, maybe I feel sorry for him. Wow. And yes, don't know for what kind of forgiveness like he's asking. What did you do? There was nothing I could say. However, just standing here like this was all I needed to do. Kinzo's moment of atonement, the moment he had spent half of his life searching for, had finally come. A human's life is packed with sin. So humans seek forgiveness while they still live. However, in most cases, there are none in this world capable of giving such forgiveness. It was like that for Kinzo. There was no longer anyone in this world who could give that to him. But a miracle had evolved one together. And in this moment, he had obtained the impossible. Oh, Beatrice! Beatrice! たとえ許してくれなくてもいい、何も言わなくてもいい。私は、お前にただ一言謝れればそれでよかった。うわ。いや。金属 yeah. kept grasping the dress hem and sobbing. A sign of humans are not forgiven by other people. They find forgiveness through regret and repentance. Hmm. I want to believe that some sin, some faults of his, has been forgiven thanks to the way I look. I wonder if she takes this principle to the future. Like with forgiveness and forgiveness to Butler maybe in episode 4. Because she said she would like forgive him if she like, if he remembers. But maybe he truly wants him to like, you know repentance and regret about this like one specific thing it's not like she's going to like actually actually like giving him forgiveness Kinzo sobbing gradually ceased and he slowly looked up at me and rose he staggered Nanjo rushed forward to support him Aww. <laughs> Okay, do you know who she actually is or you are still delusional? I guess she he's still delusional and believes that she's like actually like reincarnation. This time his words weren't direct through me, but at me. I hesitated unsure how I should respond. They actually told him! Oh, he knows she's his daughter. Oh, crap. Oh, wow. He actually told Kinzo. Oh. Now Yasuo is the only one who don't know. They need to explain to her this now. Yeah, 
No wonder he hide her from you. And he decided to tell you this because you shown that him to that you want to apologize and you actually are sorry about what you did in the past. If Kenzo would not have this mindset, then this meeting would never happen. Yeah, she did it by herself. She found the truth. I mean, you gave her a clue, but... <laughs> I, I, okay, this is, I don't know how to feel, I feel like this is wholesome, but also, I still have in mind what Kinzo did, and this is so, like, oh my god, uh, and Yasu don't know yet, Yes, he's tackling your father and your grandfather. Yeah. Okay, and Yasu don't know. Okay, now she can start figuring this, this stuff out. I think. Wait, mother and... Remind me of the mother and daughter. Oh yeah, okay, because mother Quadorian and uh, this one daughter. Yep, okay. Who are the same guy look like? Yeah, just like... Your mother, Kvadorian Beatrice. Is Yasu able to like figure out that Kinzo had a child with his child? Is she able to figure it out from this information? Mm. Probably. Because they know that there was a mistress like from a long time ago. And then there was Kvadoria. Oh no, wait, they may not know about Bisa, Bisa actually. They may know only about Kvadorian, so... Yasu may not be able to figure it out that... She may just think, oh yeah, you are my father and Kvadorian Beatrice is my mother. And that's it. She may not know about Bisa, right? I think. I'm not sure. Beatrice sama kore made. Okay, straightforward telling the facts. Yep. So they actually get to know this, both of them, at some point in time. So you've been serving basically your father. But yeah. It's all years. You did not know what your name was, your true name. I wonder if she can have like opportunity now to get like Ushiromiya name now. Because she's been Yasu this whole time. I wonder if she can get the Ushiromiya name. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also, that means you love Butler, who's also your family. Is this going to fuck up her mind? Yep. Yep, that's your lost long papa. Give him a hug now. Hi. Anatawa. Honto ni Beatrice sama no goshi son de gozaimasu. 
is such a strange fate really possible? I've dreamed about it. Dreamed about what it would be to be a golden witch Beatrice. And turns out you are. But the dream was for me alone. So I dreamed that if I solved the epitaph and carried out this ritual, I would revive as true Beatrice. Is it really conceivable after I solved it, Beatrice really did revive? Yeah, she created a lot of friends, I guess, to win her mind along the years. Yeah. Genji Komasawa have a Nanjo, not that Wardlots. Yep, okay, so I was right all the time that this free knows about her, like, you know, being battle basically. Now I think about it, that explains so many things. I always oh I was always in some in way in some way special. Genji and especially Komasawa always treated me very kindly. Yep. Then does that mean this day is a promised day, which would eventually have become no matter what? I don't understand anything anymore. It's all God's miracle. The promised fate had led me to this day. Okay, so my idea from my theory was actually right. Oh my god, we have actually confirmation. I said it's either Sayo or Leon. And I said that Leon is more true because of like current uh, stuff and that's the name that probably Kinzo gave her before she got abandoned and stuff so Kinzo knows her name. So yeah, I was right in my theory uh, from like, uh, when was it? In the early episodes when we started having Yasu backstory. When uh, yeah, we had got like Yasu voice for the first time. In this video, I made a theory, and and uh, at some point, I said that Leon is her real name. I was right. Okay. What? I wanted to give you. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. This is awesome. Okay, so we're going to give her a ring, I guess. Kinzo? So, uh, stuck out a wrinkled hand. On his uh, finger was a ring with the one eagled crest, which was the symbol of the Shimia family head. He pulled it off. Grasped it tightly and then held it out to me. I didn't know what to do. Uh, okay, uh, this actually still makes sense according to like other games because in other games, Natsuhi and Kraus, for example, still thinks that Kinzo in his deathbed on his deathbed had the ring. Kinzo and uh, uh, I mean Kraus and Natsuhi had the ring, right? Basically, that was all played out. They did not want it, Leon. Still to be in public, for some reason. I don't know yet why. Uh, but basically their plan was to... Having Kinzo keeping the ring. And when he died, everyone thought like there was no successor. And when in fact there is one. Already. So who, who planned this and why? Was it actually Leon who wanted this? If so, then why? I mean, I guess... This thing is like changing her life a lot. So maybe she don't want this. Hmm. I didn't know what to do. Slowly, as though they were being drawn forward, I held on my hands, palms up. After pressing his uh, fists against my cupped hands, Kinzo slowly opened uh, his hand and uh, let the ring drop. <laughs> Uh, 
I hadn't heard the result of my sin. And what's your sin? You still didn't told us what's your sin. I wonder if Beato will like question that. Still because he keep talking. That's my sin. That's my sin. But she don't know what kind of sin. <laughs> Imagine like Beato Leon suddenly started like walking around and like ordering like Natsuhi and everyone. <laughs> Okay, again, will you tell us what kind of sin do you have? I mean, we know, but Yasu don't know. Or Leon. Also, that also confirms my other theory from uh, the same episode as I mentioned, that Leon is a girl in this case. So yeah, we have that solved. Final request? Okay, what do you want from her? Oh shit. Father? Whoa! No... Oh, this is sudden. It's so sudden. I don't know if she can do it. It's way too sudden, probably. Also, she don't know what kind of sin you did. She have no idea if she can like forgive you or not. She don't know why would she, should she call you father. Actually, you was not in her life or her her whole life basically. You've been some outsider, and then suddenly you showed up. You say that you have sinned and you beg for forgiveness, and you want her to call you father. This is really sudden. Oh. Battery is always called the Kinzo. Uh, I think she just called him Kinzo. Not Kinzo san or Sama or something. Yeah, she just always called him Kinzo. One in form of Beatrice. Yeah. Yeah, my point exactly. Okay, everything considered, I actually feel bad for Kings right now. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, he, like, have his problems, right? He did what he did, but... Let's just keep it in the past i mean he actually is really sorry about this what happens it happened it's after years he finally realized what he did and he seeks forgiveness and he got reunited with his like lost daughter that he thought he lost that that's he basically killed <sighs> After being asked like that, was it possible for me to refuse? Even if I'm his child, I cannot see him as my father, yeah. So I felt a strong resistance to saying that word. But I decided that saying it was the right thing to do. Okay, so she just say it for the sake of saying it. For his like, basically... Mm, for his sake. Only God can truly forgive sins. 
A dog may be temporary. People can be saved by the forgiveness of others. Amazing. <laughs> that awkward my word made Kinzo laugh. Drops of silver fell from both of his eyes. In that moment, the shadow that had covered his face was wiped away. Arigato, Oh, okay, I, I, I think it's past, okay. But my eyes started like watering for a while here. Okay. That should be fine now. Ah. <clears throat> Well, you literally burned in the game. Like, you are in boiler room all the time, or Beatrice is like burning you basically in your study. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened to you. Now I think about this, I need to recheck the episode 1 prologue. Because now we see the situation in 84, what happened. Actually... No, I think I made this in the notes and in the theory that the prologue is before 84. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I said that the prologue is before 84. I'm not sure now, but I think I have this in notes actually. So maybe I will not recheck this. Yeah, because I was like wondering when the prologue, uh, like was the timeline for the prologue. And I think I said that it's before 84 actually. <laughs> But back in the day, I, I fought because there was no epitaph yet. And not because of the scene. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's... that's. Why am I even talking about this? Looking up to the heavens, Kinzo spread his arms and though facing an applaud audience, laughing at the top of his lungs. It was the final pleasure, known only by those who have been released from all regrets of this world. Kinzo laughed weekend, and when it disappeared, he drops to his knees like the puppet with cut strings and slowly fell to the ground. Wait, did he get like heart attack or something? What the hell? Did he just like, oh my god. So it's one of these cases when like someone is like basically clinging to their life because they have some regrets and they want to like do something and this is the only thing this is basically just sheer willpower at some point and they just want to achieve something and they're not giving up on life and then suddenly when they you know achieve their goal they basically think yeah i can go now and like in span of like few days they just go away is this one of these cases it seems like Unless he just got a heart attack because, yeah, he was just so overjoyed. Nanjo -sensei. Yeah. It's, wow, Genji and Nanjo, they looks and sounds like they expected that to happen. They knew, especially Nanjo, knew what's the state of uh, King's body. The other uh, master had fallen, they walked up to him slowly. They already knew. 
Kinzo Soul had already burnt itself out. After checking Kinzo Pools, Nanjo shook his head and stood back up. Okay, so... This is intertwining, basically, with... With episode 5. When Natsuhi and Kraus saw Kinzo dead. So they basically going to put Kinzo body in bed, right? Put his finger on his, like, ring on his finger. Yasu will just change into Shannon clothes. And they will act as Kinzo died in his sleep. I don't know why, though. ないだろう。親方様は、あるいはもうずっと以前にお亡くなりになっていたのです。それを親方様の魔法を。いや、ちょっとベイクリーウィルパワー。安らかに。if you think about this, technically Yasu killed him. Technically. Damn, nice. Nice Genji. Oh, and she actually calls him now father without like any restraint. Wow. Because of what she just witnessed. She just realized that he truly cared about her in the last of his life. Oh, don't make me cry for Kizu and Beato, like both of them. Oh my god. That was the one night reunion between me and my father and also our final farewell. Wow. She still don't know what the scene is though. Song without name. So what's the name of the song? Genkinkaogokibodeshtara. I mean, love for butler cannot. Like, you cannot buy love with money. <laughs> Maybe that's why she don't want this. It must be it. That's why she want, don't want this, because her only, like, real dream she had for her whole life, maybe not whole life, but for past like few years, is to be reunited with Butler and uh, for him to love her. And gold cannot grant it. So she just don't care about gold. Yeah. Uh huh. Of course, I'm glad I have a lot of money. However, money can't heal the pain in my heart. Yeah, exactly. I just want him to come back. Oh. She have a key. Oh. So she can like enter here whenever she wants. Oh. Okay, so you don't need to like actually solve the epitaph each time you enter here. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> she was the only one who knew the answer of the epitaph riddle, and the only and the only key to this place was now hers. At this point, she truly was the master of this golden VIP room. I wonder if this key been used before. I wonder if she gave this key to someone. Now we know there's a key to this room, so you don't necessarily need to solve the epitaph to get here. 
You need literally zero knowledge to get here if you have a key. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
She calls Beato princess and seems like they know each other and Beato got to learn the magic from her. And in this backstory, it never happened. Yasu don't know anyone by the name Vargilia. There's some contradiction here. It's like two different things, two different timelines. Maybe Vargilia is... Oh! Oh! Young Kumasawa, aka Virgilia, is... the... teacher for Kuvadorian Beatrice, then. So the prologue happens before Yasu is born. It's when Kuvadorian Beato is still small. Okay, that makes more sense. That's why they're different. Yeah, okay. So that was about Kuvadorian batteries, not about our current batteries. It's not like she learned. That was actually the other one. Okay, I think that's, that's the case. In this case, the timeline makes sense. If the princess was the Kuvadorian one. Yeah. What are you gonna ask? Nanigananda <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's totally new to her. Yeah, you've been servant all this time. Genji is like... Genji been higher up than you in ranks, and then suddenly you are his master. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Genji being Genji. Genji is awesome. I love Genji. <laughs> what a child. Yeah, and Kumasawa as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see how this played out. Because we know from... I mean, episode 5 is like... As I said, once again, not real reliable source of information, but... The seal it has some information, so we'll see how it like translates to this one. So she Dion Samaga Seshkina Toshi Kokesha de Argo Shinakteva Narimase. Kyo Yuri Anataga Ushumiake Toshu. That's how it should play it. But we know it did not. What does it got Toshu not this son? Sorini Jiki Toshu up. Well, you found the epitaph, so not really. Yeah, now I think about this. Kraus had one bar of gold. What if they actually told Kraus, only Kraus, that Suhi is not aware of that? And Kraus did not accept it. And for, uh, for the proof, they brought one gold bar to Kraus to show him that she actually found the gold. Because he uh, like did not like believe her and she didn't want to like uh, give like you know the solution basically to others. I wonder if that's the case. So Kraus in the episode 5 technically knew that Leon is successor at this point. I'm so curious how it happened, how it played out. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, you are the head, you can just give the ring away, right? You can just like stop being successor at the moment you 
started being the one. So no yakumewa Yahari Krausamaga Hikitsugaru Honga Ito Moimas. Yorosino Desko. Yeah, like you can just like give away your status. But as you are Kyo Kokode Jibunga Dareka or Shirukoto got the Kimasta. Hitonara Dare de Mosite Rio Sino Koto. But as you are Umarena Garaniste, Sorega Nakata. Soreo Kyo Kokode Erukoto got the Kimasta. If I suddenly became Ushima a family head, how Kraus Sama would react? Yeah, pretty much. How angry would Madame be? I don't want to become the head if it means making them feel like that. Yeah. And also, yeah, it's like really sudden. But then I learned who I am, who gave birth to me, how and when. These are things I wanted want to learn from them as time goes by. That alone is enough. Yeah. 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 うしろみやけ当主としてのご命令ですか。はい。うん、かしこまりました。親方様。オッケー。それはそのように致します。今夜のことも全て内密にしてください。Yep, I just これまでと同じように待ってこれまでと同じに何も変わらずにそれだけが私の望みですかしこまりました親方様。Okay, so it's like it plays out really differently than I thought. I mean, not entirely. But still, you said that everything went into like bad things when you found the gold. So far, I see only like not a bad things happening actually, so... Huh? Huh? そう、ご希望でいらっしゃいます。あんたがそうしたいと言うなら、私は何の異論もない。金蔵さんの遺言はあんたに全てを委ねるだ。そのあんたがそれを望むなら、私たちには何の文句もない。これまでと同じようにと
and at any time in pay at any time she may just like request hey Kraus, you know what you are not fit i'm taking your place and every and genji kumasawa and everyone will have to like obey basically because she's the master right i think that's how it plays because she said that if i need money i will ask you about it so if you are not the head you cannot do that <laughs> かしこまりました。ここにいたる仕掛けも鍵も全てあなただけのものでございます。そして今夜のことは私どもに一度秘密にすることを誓います。Okay。時期投資はクラウス様となられますが。Now I think about this. You know how frustrating the conference must be for Shannon. If you think about this, Members of the family comes to the uh, Rock and Jima discussing inheritance. Like Inzo said, like vultures basically waiting for his death. And Shannon, who technically is now the head, having all the gold, need to hear that. How disrespectful they are. Okay. Maybe that's somehow a trigger. Yeah. Okay.。So that makes sense that how we like making like Shannon like cool pretend stuff, right? I mean, she's just like a servant, but she can just tell hey Genji, you know what? Do that and do that, and he will obey because she's master. This is awesome. I don't know how it leads to like massacre, but I guess like conference just like get over like everything and like she's just like annoyed by that and stuff. I don't know. But she's still like doing this like for like Butler, not like for like other siblings fighting for gold. I still don't see it. She still didn't learn about the sin of Kinzo. Hmm. A vast uh, mountain of gold and the ring of the Shimia family head. The dress of the portrait Beatrice. And I became the true Beatrice, the golden witch. Right here in my very own golden land. If I think about it, not much has actually changed. After all, I've always been a golden witch. I've just had a few more people acknowledge that. November 29th. The day I became a true witch. Hmm. The diary. Ah,我こそは我にして我らなり。我は黄金の魔女。このロッケンジマの真の支配者にして無限の黄金の所有者でも何も満たされずたった一人の思い人が帰ってきてくれる。Yeah, then you will be completed. With that single element, that's the most important one. Good play. Awesome. Okay, love it. That was a cool episode. I don't know how it can like lead to murder though. The witch illusion scatters. Oh. Someone discovered the truth about Shannon, perhaps? Huh. And that is the end of this episode. So yeah, we'll see the next one in the next episode. So yeah. The Witch Illusion Scatters is going to be the next one. This episode was pretty awesome. I really like that. I almost cried. Okay, I got like teary tears like in my eyes when like we had the Kinzo apologizing, apologizing and just just seeing like his grief. I really felt like bad for Kinzo at this point. 
and how he wanted to be called father. I mean, we know what he did and stuff, but still... I don't know, I just cannot help but just like feel sad for him. Yeah, anyway, that would be it for this episode. I like how it played out. And so the ending was pretty much not maybe necessarily the same as I thought, but kind of similar, like they played it out, like they put Kinzo in bed basically and told Kraus and Atsuhi that he passed in his sleep or something and they kept everything secret, so yeah. Okay, that gave a lot of light on like Beatrice, Shannon relationship with everything and we know that the key to the golden lamp actually exists and who knows, she might give it to someone at some point in the games. Who knows? Anyway, we'll see this in the next episode, like what happens next. So thank you everyone for being with me for this episode. So leave a like if you like this story. Uh, check my Discord. You can subscribe if you're not, su not subscribed. You can also become a member if you want to become a member and support me that way. And have episodes earlier. Thank you members for supporting me. That means a lot to me. And thank you everyone for your likes, for your comments. And yeah. Let me know what you think about this episode. Do you think... Do you forgive Kinzo? That's one of the most important questions for this episode, actually, probably. So let me know in the comments, how do you feel about Kinzo? Do you forgive him? Do you think he deserved, like, meeting... Uh, this meeting with Beatrice? Do you think it was needed? Just let me know what you think about this whole situation. And I will see you in the next episode. So for now, Pocket Watch is going out.